Hi everyone, I'm Miss McCausland and in this session we're going to work on our mark making and texture techniques using the artist Paul Clay as our inspiration. And then smaller circles, pressing harder and overlapping at the end there. And you should get that dark to light again. There are a few more examples of there of things that you could do. That's fine. You can do those if you want to. But I'd like to move on to the realistic textures. Using these techniques, let's have a look at some of those and see if we can recreate them on our page. Welcome back. I've now been around my garden and collected all the photographs that I need and I've put them onto two pages for you to access through the resources. Feel free to use them all, they're all my own photos. So, and I think I've got a range of textures that you'll like to do with me today. The first two I want to start on are these little chaps here. And I have been working with my dad in my garden, trying to fix the ponds together over the last few days. There's always a lot of wildlife in my garden, but a robin and its partner has been flitting around my garden whilst we've been working after the worms. One day my dad mentioned to me that my granddad used to walk away from his spade and a robin would hop down onto it and say hello to him. Not a care in the world, not worried at all about humans and I thought well that would be great but I wasn't sure it would ever happen. But over the last few days, Mr. and Mrs. Robin have been joining me whilst I'm recording my videos. I just had to share this with you. I think it's really made my year. And in fact, they're, they're bobbing around in the background on this uh, blustery day uh, in the little, little robins in the trees, which is just absolutely gorgeous. So I hope you can hear the baby robins in the palm tree that's just over here next to me whilst I'm recording this today. So starting with these, I want to zoom in on, let's do this one here first. So if I really zoom in here, I'm not after drawing an observation drawing. I just want to look at the texture, think about how it feels and recreate it. And I can see these fluffy little feathers there. So I'm going to do it in this one here. It's quite a big one, but that's fine. And I'm going to recreate this in here. And I can see it's quite similar to this one. But rather than it being like that, like a Nauts and Crosses board, I want to go like that. I can see these shapes like that. I'm going to repeat those patterns all the way down, remembering those basic things, overlap, spacing, size and pressure. And you might be thinking it doesn't really look the same but it will do the more I do it. I'm going in the same direction. I might change it a little bit to recreate from that photo as it goes around there. But you'll see that's starting to look like it. Now I'm gonna make it a bit darker over here because I still want to practice that tonal texture too today. So overlapping, pressing harder over on this side, just going up to the edge there. I could go smaller if I wanted to, if I wanted to do that effect, but on this one, I'm going to keep them all the same size as I draw that baby Robin's fluff from this photo I took earlier. So same technique, but just change this a little bit. And I know this only because I'm using a reference photo. So either with the real objects in front of you or reference photos, don't start making these up because then they'll just turn into patterns that are from your imagination. We want to be recreating realistic textures. So I'm going over and over again there. And that has started to look like that little chick there. Now let's have a look at the other robin and see if there's any of the textures we can see on there. 
So I could do longer textures if I wanted to, and I might come back to that later, but that's quite a similar texture, so you could work from either of those. The next one I want to do is, I think I'm going to do this one, which is quite similar to what we've done, but these are called rabbit ears, and there are plants that uh, I have always loved when I grow up, because if you ever get to feel one, they feel as soft as rabbit's ears, but they are a real plant. And you can see that they're really, fuzzy so they're not sharp feathers like these so we're going to need to use the side of our pencil and holding it in that grip that we've talked about before either like that like that like that or any of the other ways that i've shown you we're now going to have a go at that one i'll do it in the one next to it to show the difference and it's very very similar like that so we're using short little strokes all in the same direction and this texture could be used for lots of things, could be used for lots of animals, that's for sure. Could be used for clothes as well, or facial hair as well. Working my way down there. And you can scribble a bit as well. Don't feel that they need to be robotically precise, these little lines. But consider the direction. That's the one I've been using. I'm actually going to make it dark through the center of this one, inspired by that there. So again, I'm going to press a bit harder in the middle, like so. So have a go at that one as well. You'll see that by using the side of the pencil and changing the angle of that pencil from the point to the side, that you get a much softer effect. And I really feel like I could reach in there and touch that texture and it would feel all fluffy and really nice to touch. Like so. Next one, I'm going to do this one here. This is off my bridge. This is a bit of old wood, which is... Uh, the bark all coming off it. So I'm going to go to the top. The reason I'm going to the top is because I don't want to smudge down here because again I forgot my piece of paper to cover the page to work on. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to continue down there. So I think I'm going to add another wiggle through here actually. Another pour clay wiggle. To break up those lines a little bit like that. So I've got more spaces to work in. So I want to do two here. I want to do this smooth one. So it's the same as the rabbit's ear, but we're just going to work our way down with a long stroke instead. I'm going to do it in this one here. So we're going to go up and down nice and smoothly, following those lines. You might want to use your motor memory and your index finger to do this bit. and recreating that similar sort of texture. I'm deliberately making those lines look a little bit separate. And then I can see some sharp points in there. Like so. And I could even be inspired by that part there, where it's a bit rough with the point of my pencil. And then I'm going to shade it a little bit more and again, you've got that pressing harder, pressing lighter textures in there. Also, if you look really closely, you can see some dots on that one there. I'm going to add some little dots in there too. And then some tiny lines as well and it's starting to look like wood like that now if I was to do that on a on a large scale that would really look like wood I could even use that bit there and just shade it a bit darker like so like that 
This bit here, however, is much rougher. And I'm going to really zoom in there. I'm going to do that one in here. I'm going to do it this way instead. And it's a lot scribblier. So do have a go at this one as well. Again, using the side of my pencil for this one. And don't worry if it doesn't look absolutely like the texture. Quite often it might not look identical because we're doing these, these crazy little boxes. But at long, as long as you're practicing those techniques, it means that next time you do go and draw a tree or a bird or whatever, you'll be going into the back of your mind and remembering, just like riding a bike, those techniques that we've learned today. There we go. So I've gone sideways, I've gone shorter and not quite as smooth for that part there. Again, I could add that, that little crease if I wanted, if I wanted to. Another one, this one here. This is a bit of my garden fence. I'm going to do it in this one here. So I'm going to do it in, uh, no, actually, I'll do it in this one here. So it's similar to the wood, but it's a lot, it's got a lot more lines. So I'm going to work my way along, scribbling with the side of my pencil. It's quite nice to do it next to this one, because again, you can see the difference between the rabbit and this one. I'm going to draw another line, and another one straight across. And then you can see these lines that come down in between. I'm going to keep it quite sketchy. And if I do it too accurately, as in uh, do too perfectly, it won't look like it. So I'm having those lines going straight down as well. And then some of them go wiggly. Like that. And I've done that texture too. Again, I could use the point and overlap and shrink that technique to get those in there. I'll come back to the grass later. I'm going to go onto the second page, which is here. Ah, now the only picture that I didn't take myself is this cat here in the middle, and that's because there's a ginger cat that often comes into my garden, but it's always too quick to escape um, when I try to take a photo of it. So this is a ginger cat that I've taken from stock photos from the internet. I'll do this one next. So to be able to do fur, long fur, it's very similar to doing the short feathers, but we just need to be working longer. It's the same technique as hair as well. And I think that would be a nice one to do in this one here because it sweeps and swoops around this one here does for me. I'm going to use my motor memory technique where I learn those shapes. I'm just gonna draw them on in there. What we do is we draw one line and then we draw the others next to it, like so. Going from thicker to thinner like that. Now I'll do another one. So I draw both sides of it and then draw the bits in the middle. Like that. I've not really varied the pressure that much yet. I'm just drawing a few of these in. You can have them overlapping. Definitely. Like so. And then I'm not going to exactly follow all of these. If you wanted to go from darker to lighter, you could by pressing harder at the top. I'll do that now. It doesn't have to be this ginger cat. It could be a black cat or whatever. And I'm pressing harder at the top. Letting it swoop down there. This is one that always feels hard to do to start with, but as you practice it, this one does become much easier. I'm going to go down here. Starting at several points, swooping down to that one point there. And sweeping round. I'm going to go all the way down around here. So long strokes, if you're doing it really sketchily, like really jagged sketching marks, then it will not look like hair. You need to sweep all the way around like so. And add those in there and curve around however you like with whichever square you've chosen. And then you can work in some darker areas where you 
overlap and press harder wherever you like. And that's the same technique, like I say, for hair as well, if you were to do some hair. Next one I want to do. Well, this one we've already done. This is my table. This is my um, garden uh, breakfast table. And we've already done that one, really, because that's this one here. So that's a nice, easy one to do. I'm going to do a little small square within here. I'm going to shade a nice, smooth shade there. Keeping it in the lines. But this time I'm going to use my smudging stick to really make it soft. I'm, so I'm going to make it with the textural tone that we've been talking about, darker here, like it is there, and then lighter towards the top. But this time I'm going to use a small smudging stick and just swirl that around a little bit in there. Remember, you can use a cotton bud or a rolled up piece of paper as well if you want to do that one. And that's a really nice, smooth texture like that table. Next, oh, fluffy bumblebee. So this is uh, one of the bumblebees that's been living in my garden and sadly it, it uh, passed away yesterday. Um, but it did mean I got the opportunity to share with you how beautiful a bumblebee is up close. So here he is and we're going to have a go at short fur. So that was the long, long cat fur or hair and this one's going to be a short fur. And it's really nice because you've got the dark and the light tone as well. So I'm going to recreate that in this box here. So short strokes, always practice with motor memory if it helps. And they cross over like so. If I was to do this, it would look too perfect. So make sure as you do those bands, you cross over like so and the same rules apply again i'm gonna add another row there Oops. if that's the darker one i'll need to press harder and go over the top again and then i can do the lighter part by pressing really lightly like so he's a lovely one to do it makes me sad that a bee's died but it's a really nice texture that we can take from it and learn from and then i'm going to do another lighter one there it's a lovely example of that dark and light tone and then a darker one there like that I'm going to do a couple more and then I'm going to leave you to finish yours off and I'm going to show you how to finish these off completely uh, with those finishing touches. The next one I'm going to do is this one here and this is the chair. It's one of the chairs in my garden but actually we've already done this texture so I'm just going to recreate it again and if you've not realised already it is that crosshatch texture that we did before. So I'm just going to do a little bit of crosshatch up here in this corner to represent that. So it's just nice to re-practice that crosshatch technique. I could even vary it a little bit by using the side of my pencil a bit more to soften it like that one there. Add those lines in there. So it is a little bit different to that one down here, which was done with a much sharper pencil. And then we've got these two up here. We've got bricks, which are much rougher. And then we've got the clay of a chimney here. So we've got the clay, the soft clay of it. Now we've practiced the smooth table there, but actually I'm going to do this one first here because it's very, very similar. I'm going to do it in, I'm going to draw another line through here and cut that one up in this space here. I'm going to shade it, but this time I'm going to swirl it like that. It's like the scribble technique, but more swirled. Or within that box. Building that up. 
layering and layering. I'm looking at how it gets darker in certain places and again being inspired by that I'm going to add the dark area here by pressing harder and overlapping. And then when you look closely, you can see little lines and ridges and cracks. So with the point of my pencil, I'm going to add some of those in there. And if you want to, because it's quite a smooth surface, you could use the smudging pencil again. Sorry, the uh, blending stump to add a bit of smooth to there. Now that's exactly the same as how you do the, the glass texture really, just without those sharp bits. But I might just do a little bit of lifting for, for the glass texture. And I have left a glass texture in there if you'd like to have a go at it yourselves. So just not totally smooth, but I've made that a little bit smoother there. Added some dots in and that's now looking nice and rough. The last one I want to show you is this one here, which is the brick. That one. If I do it in this space here, down here, it's the same, but it's a lot tighter. So it's a lot closer together, those textures. So same as that one, but closer together like that. And what's really nice about this one is if you wanted to, you can draw the bricks with the mortar in between. And that's your light texture in there. That's your dark texture on these. So I can scribble in there like that. Remembering that if you did it all flat and long shading, it wouldn't look as rough. I'm even going to go on the other side of this bit here just to see what that looks like. Be a bit playful and experimental. Like so. And then if we look closely, we can see lots of dots. And this is where some stippling is good to add. Now, we, when we stipple, we don't stab the page. It means you've got less control. What we do is we just wiggle that pencil in tiny little splatty circles, like so. And again, if we layer them up, this is like two textures actually over top of each other. If we layer them up like that, we'll start to get those textures like that. And I can do that on this side as well. And I could do a few more. It'd be nice to leave some gaps as well. And I will do a few more after this video. But now I've done this one. Scribbling those in, those little dots. Now I've done this one with some very pale dots. Less is more for this bit here. So I'm going to leave a lot of that bit white that brickwork there. So now I've done this, I want to look at the whole picture, decide if I'm happy with it, decide if I'm finished, and then we'll move on to that final stage. Once you're happy with the textures, we move on to that last stage. And in this stage, I'm going to use my imagination, and I'm going to use Insula Dolcemara again to inspire me to create those bold, thick, pore clay lines. You could use charcoal or a pen, but definitely not a Sharpie or a permanent marker because those bleed and look messy. I have decided to move from a HB. I could just use a HB and press hard, but uh, I'm going to use a 7B pencil to get those really, really bold lines in there. A uh, Robin's just flown straight past the camera. I don't know if it was on the shot there. Um, anyway, I want you to have a look in your artwork and try and spot your own symbols, 
characters, animals and shapes in there. And you can also add a few eyes as well, which I will add in there too for mine. So using those lines, I can see something that looks a bit like a whale there, like so. I'm going to go over it twice. Then I'm going to add two little eyes there. And then I like this shape down here. Overlapping and pressing hard to get it darker for that really dark tone. I'm going to add a couple of eyes in there as well using those insular Dolce Mara eyes. Don't worry too much about these lines, just add them in there and see if your imagination comes up with something as you go. In there I'm going to draw that shape there. And I want to split this up a little bit so I'm going to draw that line going all the way through there, like so. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to speed up the video whilst I just add my last details in there and I'll see you at the end. So having looked at mine and just spent a few moments there looking at the whole of the composition and deciding whether I've got enough dark areas across the whole page, I think I've decided I have. I've evenly spaced out these ideas, these lines, and I've got areas of light and dark on there. And you can clearly see that these shapes have been inspired by what I think of as the snakes and the elephants and the this person here. And I've, I've used those eyes and dots um, across my page too. So I'm feeling that I've really tried to absorb Paul Clay's creative, playful style there on the page, whilst also showing that I can do that mark making and that textual tone. Up here, I think I've drawn a little person. That just happened. It wasn't anything I thought about. So do, do draw whilst thinking about it, but also a little bit subconsciously too. Quite hard to do, I know but relax and just let your imagination take over whilst you're doing this part of the activity. So, thanks a lot for watching, good luck and bye. <laughs>